Reading 1861-4. In giving an analysis of the mental and spiritual desires of this entity, 1861, it is well that there be given something of the premise from which the reasoning for the entity would be gained, or that there may be a more comprehensive understanding of the suggestions, as would be made for this entity at this time. First, one finds self in a three-dimensional plane of consciousness, all that may be known materially is subject to that dimension. That is may be comprehended in the mental, may reach into a fourth-dimensional plane. As the variation between a book with its dimensions and the contents of same, which may be of a mental reaction entirely. Yet the spiritual import is the premise. As to what is the ideal, purpose and intent of same, as to the effect the contents of such a book would have upon an individual entity. Or, one in the material phases of his experience draws mentally upon comparisons of things, conditions, experiences, through the mental faculties of the body, and his reaction is still dependent upon the ideal he holds. Then, the purposes for which an entity enters a material experience. As indicated, the entity comes from without or from an unknown quantity into, first, that of desire, association, and conceptive activity with mental and physical growth, developing into a channel through which the spiritual import manifests. Then its purpose is that such an entity, as this 1861, may make manifest the spiritual influence in a material world. Each soul was in its first division from the Godhead to be a companion with that force, that influence, that purpose. Hence the purpose is to grow in grace, knowledge, understanding, for the indwelling in that presence. Hence all that manifests in the material world is a shadow of that which is of mental or spiritual import. And as to whether or not each division in mind, matter, become sufficient to be indwelling, or at an at one with the creative force, is dependent upon the application of the purposes and desires of such force in its material association and materiality. Then, there are imports, as the mental attributes, the material attributes, the spiritual attributes. Growth depends upon whether all influences or desires or hopes are of a creative or spiritual source. And that pronouncement or injunction, today there is set before thee good and evil, life and death, is applicable in the experience of each and every entity. In the experiences of this entity, owing to its supersensitiveness to beauty, to rote, to harmony, these warnings would be an important point in the experience. Do not confuse rote, or mental growth, with spiritual import. It is true that the combination of H2O constantly produces water. It is true that the bow upon the string at a certain tone constantly produces C, or another note, to which the attunement is made to a first cause, as the H2O is to a first cause. But it is not always water that is wanted with hydrogen and oxygen. Neither is it always C that is desired upon the tuner tone of the instruments. Thus there are influences and forces, or sources, from which the supply has come, and does and must flow. Yet these activities through the mental processes will constantly repeat, or give the same condition, if they are applied again and again. Then, the knowledge of the existence of such is the mental process, but the application of the source of each of these, as a premise in the experience, is that there is the willingness of that which is the spirit, at an at one with the first cause, or God, or creative force, to be used as that force of hydrogen or oxygen, or as the bow, to produce that as the creative force would have signified or manifested in a material world, or constant desire, purpose, will, to be at an at one with the creative forces in its associations, in its dealings, in its relationships to its fellow men. The pattern here, too, has been made manifest in a way, a manner, in which each soul, each entity, may find its way. And he is the way, the truth, the light. He manifested life, in a material body, taking on the desires of flesh, and yet using the mental attributes to keep body, mind, with all the attributes of each, in the full accord, the full attunement to be, do, that is would make for each soul the more perfect, the more excellent way.
Then, that life, that activity, is as the ideal, as the pattern. And with those promises that have been made in and through that life as exemplified, one may find oneself in the full accord with the divine purpose for which the self entered this material experience. Thus may it manifest among its fellow men that same pattern as did he, who gave, be ye perfect, even as my Father in heaven is perfect. Abide in me, and I in thee, that my Father and I will come and abide with thee. Thus may an entity, this entity, find in the pattern as is set there the answer to each and every question that may arise. For he is the maker, the beginning, the end, the purpose, the desire, and not as one out of the world, but not of the world, though in the world, even as he. These principles, these tenets, these truths, made a part of thy life, thy experience, thy associations, will show the way. For, inasmuch as ye do it unto the least of thy brethren, ye do it unto thy maker. With this consciousness, the entity arrives at that awareness of being at an at one -ment. And when there are those conditions arising in the experience, in its attuning of that which brings harmony in the unison of music, or in the harmony of the unison of purpose and desire of one towards another, though they may be of different bodies, the desires and purposes produce an attunement, even as the bow upon the string, they are of different sources, yet they bring the harmony that becomes creative in its generic force in the experience of the individual or become inharmonious by the lack of being at an at one or in a tune, with that necessary for the harmonies in life, in association, in activities. These become then as the experiences of the entity, that give the insight into the ways and manners in which it may so apply itself in its daily relationships to others, as to to bring greater hope, greater desire, greater purposefulness for harmonious forces into the experiences of others. How may I bring into activity my pineal and pituitary glands, as well as the kundalini and other chakras, that I may attain to higher mental and spiritual powers? Are there exercises for this purpose, and if there are, please give them. As indicated, first so fill the mind with the ideal that it may vibrate throughout the whole of the mental being. Then, close the desires of the fleshly self to conditions about same. Meditate upon thy will with me. Feel same. Fill all the centers of the body, from the lowest to the highest, with that ideal, opening the centers by surrounding self first with that consciousness, not my will, but thine, O Lord, be done in and through me. And then, have that desire, that purpose, not of attaining without his direction, but with his direction, who is the maker, the giver of life and light, as it is indeed in him that we live and move and have our being. Is there any method whereby I might develop such faculties as a perfect memory, intuition, telepathy, astral projection, and healing of others, as well as myself? All healing of every nature comes from the divine within that body, or the body applied to such methods or manners of healing. The attuning of self, not as to that this or that may be accomplished. But remember, as has ever been given of old, all manner of expression, all life, emanates from one source. God. God in thyself. Not as I will, but as thou wilt. Let that be the purpose, the import, the intent, the desire, and that which is needed for the bringing of its abilities and faculties of every nature in attunement will be done. And thus give off, in harmonious accent, that is will be pleasing in his sight, the purpose for which each soul enters a material experience. How may I best be used as a channel to be of mental and spiritual assistance to others? First by finding self and self's relationship, and the creative forces being manifested in thy daily activity, thy daily speech, thy daily conversation, thy daily convocation with thy fellow men, in that each activity is as unto the Lord.